Right, so now you should have been watching the micro on the dyno for a mapping session. Now that mapping session was to get the supercharger mapped in with the help of the brand new GFB valve that we installed in the previous video. And then just as was that head of the dyno, the handsome boys from Haltech turned up with a bag of goodies. So they have bought me a set of EGT sensors to fit to the micro. Now the reason being is that if we look, if we go look at the old head from the engine we melted at the brands, we can definitely see there's some imbalance on the air fuel ratio across the four cylinders. Now that's partly probably down to the way I've designed the inlet manifold. Yes, I know Scifab, if you're watching, I should have made a door plenum, but we're here now. So what we're going to be able to do with these EGT sensors is we're going to be able to adjust the fueling per cylinder on the trim. Um, and what it will do, the Howtech will target the same EGT temperature across all four cylinders. And it will do that by adding and removing fuel to suit. So my job this morning is to strip the exhaust manifold off weld these bums into the runners on the manifold and then they've brought me a selection of sensors of varying different lengths to make sure that we can get the cables routed nicely and uniform somewhere in the engine base. Now I really haven't got time to do this with our current workload so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me my headphones on, I'm going to crack open a can of iron brew and then we're going to smash this out in about an hour. Right, so there we go, we've got the manifold off. Now we need to figure out where we're going to put these EGT sensors now. One or four are dead simple because they come out straight from the head flange, but two and three are a bit odd because they come out at a straight 90 degree angle. So I think we're going to put these ones straight about there, and then on these ones they're going to have to sort of lean a bit, maybe. We'll try and get it as close up there as possible. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to clean up this material with a bit of scotch, get a nice clean weld surface, or we'll punch a hole in all four of these, and then we'll get these welded on.
right and there she goes she's all back together we've got all the EGT sensors in the manifold now you can probably sort of see from this angle that we've had to bend and manipulate a couple to get some clearance down there because it is pretty tight down there uh, but we're not touching which is good so we've had to use what sensors that we've got sent so the lamps aren't exactly ideal but it's going to at least get into the firewall down this plug down there and into the control box and then this will sit behind the dashboard with all the other how tech stuff um, and then we'll get it plugged into the elite right so we've got the car back together we've got all our egt sensors plumbed in we've got the they've got it all plugged into the box i've just got to tidy up all that wiring in a bit Right, so we'll just go ahead and start the engine, make sure we've got no nasty leaks or anything. Many hours later. Right, so a uh, bit of a jump cut there for everyone. It's now the next day, the next morning, whatever you want to call it. So we got the engine started and we immediately saw some data that wasn't giving us good news uh, we had a hot spot on cylinder 2 so cylinder 2 is the one that we melted on the engine from Brands Hatch um, and we spent the best part of four hours trying to diagnose an issue on that cylinder we swapped injectors we swapped plugs we swapped HT leads we swapped coils everything you could think of we changed and we still had a hot spot on cylinder 2 now I'll show you on a laptop in a minute what that issue was um, and how we saw that data but if the EGTs on cylinders 1, 3 and 4 were 200 degrees the EGT on cylinder 2 was 120 degrees hotter so that's bad news and then in the end it turns out that Muggins here has inserted the sensor too far into the bore now I was aware of that in the instructions which are here as you can see in the instructions, it tells you to poke it out 6mm. Now when I welded the bosses in on the bench, I poked the sensors in and I marked the sensors to make sure we got the correct depth. But I think what had happened is, is that when I installed the sensor, it had dropped down a bit further than I... I think what happened is that when I dropped the sensor in, I must have rubbed off the, the pen marking and I lost my reference point for the depth of the sensor and I ended up installing it deeper than I anticipated. So that caused that cylinder to read a lot hotter than the other three cylinders. So as like a, a desperate last minute attempt, we swapped the sensors from cylinder one and cylinder two round to see if that issue followed to the next cylinder. And after doing that, the EGT temperatures were all the same. So lesson learned is that when you fit in these kit is to make sure you mark your depths correctly and insert the sensors into the manifold the exact same depth all four sensors otherwise you are going to get a temperature variation between the cylinders and you're going to end up spending four hours chasing an issue which doesn't exist So as you can see them top four black boxes there just here are our EGT channels now you can sort of see the EGT3 is reading a bit higher than the other ones but we're all starting to warm up so it'll take a while to get the sensors actually warmed up and then the temperature difference between the two will start to level themselves out um, but you can see we're about 20 degrees difference at the moment between the cylinders but EGT2 at this point previously with the sensor at the wrong depth um, you know that would be that would currently be reading about 250 degrees so massively massive difference between them and that's all down to not having the sensors at the same depth in the cylinders so very important when you come to fit this kit on your car so with EGT sensors fitted you're going to be able to see exactly what the engine is doing and how it's reacting to your fuel and ignition input and ultimately hopefully prevent the engine from melting itself now we should be able to see if that one cylinder is getting hot because 
engines melt because of heat so we'll be able to see immediately if there's an issue with the tune or something's failed like an injector's gone down or a spark plug or a coil pack's gone down highly unlikely scenario but you never know and we'll be able to program safety features into the ECU now so if we if the ECU sees an EGT it's not happy with it will put the car into some form of limp load or at least notify me that something's getting hot so I can save the engine bring it back into the pits and then obviously we can diagnose a fault maybe like a plug's come loose or whatever so very valuable piece of equipment now i need to thank caltech for supplying all the egt hardware it was at their insistence that, that we fit it to get the best we can out of this engine they've been down here for the last couple of days giving us a hand and obviously helping us diagnose all the issues we had last night and now finally now we've got that piece of important data we're going to hopefully get it on the dyno today um, if you did watch our previous video, we've now got a blow-off valve fitted as well and that should allow us to start mapping in the supercharger so it's going to be a very exciting day while we get the supercharger working and finally see what we can do on the stock engine and see how far we can push it now with the EGT sensors. Of course, there's going to be a separate video on the dyno session and the results from that. But if you want to find out more rather than waiting for these videos, then don't forget to like the Facebook page and follow us on Instagram as we do post quite a bit of content on there of, of what's happening with the car before the videos go live. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions regarding the EGT kit from Haltech, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer your question because no doubt I've probably missed some information in the filming of this video which might leave some questions unanswered. So with that being said, don't forget to like this video, drop a comment down below, subscribe and don't forget to share this video with your nan with a can of iron brew. Young Andrew gave me this to try, Fiery Iron Brew. He said, Gran, you have to try it. You'll love it. So here goes.